Hello everyone and thank you for giving me this opportunity to present my research as part of the workshop on challenges and promises of inferring emotion from images and video in conjunction with CVPR 2020. The title of my research is Discriminant Distribution Agnostic Laws for Facial Expression Recognition in the Wild. In this talk, I will cover an introduction on problem statement, our contribution, our proposed method, the preliminary concepts that are related to our work, our proposed loss function, and how to optimize it. And in the experiment section, we will experiment with a wide toy dataset, toy dataset and two widely popular facial expression recognition datasets called AffectNet and RAFDB. And I will finally conclude this talk. Facial expression recognition is actually a multi-class image classification problem where the input space is a 2D facial image and the output space is a label that we assign to that input from a fixed set of categories, such as neutral, happy, sad, surprise, anger, disgust, and fear. So for this K-class image classification problem, K is actually 7. Here you see some sample images that we have assigned some labels to from the previously mentioned labels in the previous slide. Facial expression recognition has applications in healthcare, autonomous driving, human-computer interaction, and education. For facial expression recognition, we typically deal with two types of data set. One type of data set is lab controlled data sets, such as the Japanese female facial expression data set that you see here. It has a small number of samples, number of subjects, and intra-class variation, and because of this, they are not suitable for real-world applications. On the other hand, we have natural wide data sets, such as AffectNet, that has large number of images, large number of subjects, large intra-class variation, and intra-class similarity. And because they are larger scale, and they are acquired in an unconstrained environment, they are suitable for real-world applications. Because of the state-of-the-art result on visual recognition task, we also use a convolutional neural network-based approach for our uh, method. So in particular, CNN extracts special features from the input image, and the deep features are pulled into the embedding space using a feature pooling layer. Finally, a softmax function as a loss function will yield a prediction for the input. However, there are some challenges when working with wild fair data sets. There is large interclass variation, meaning that the images from the same class are very varied. And there is also large interclass similarity, meaning that the images from different classes might be very similar. There is also extreme class imbalance, meaning that the data set is divided into majority classes and minority classes. So our goal is to map from the input space to a well-clustered feature space and achieve optimal intra-class compactness and inter-class separation. Softmax loss that is typically used in a convolutional ne neural network, however, is insufficient for discriminant features. So center loss comes to the res rescue and it minimizes intra-class variation. And because of this minimization, it actually implicitly maximizes inter-class separation. However, looking at the deep features learned by center loss under wild scenarios, we can see that even though majority classes are well separated, but still minority classes are overlapped in the d-dimensional embedding space. So our solution is discriminant distribution agnostic loss or DDA loss for short to regulate deep features in the embedding space where extreme class imbalance exists. DDA loss yields discriminant features for wild scenarios. It minimizes intra-class variation and it maximizes inter-class separation for both majority and minority classes. It is jointly optimized with softmax loss and center loss. Here we see how DDA loss is compared to center loss when optimizing an embedding space. As you can see, center loss is pulling the deep features of a class toward their corresponding class center in the embedding space. But DDA loss is not only doing that, but also pushing the deep features of a class away from other class centers. So as a result, we will have a more optimized uh, embedding space in the case of DDA loss where both majority classes and minority classes are well separated. So to summarize our contribution, we propose a novel loss function called discriminant distribution agnostic loss to regulate the distribution of deep features in a d-dimensional embedding space where imbalanced distribution of data exists. 
BDA loss implicitly minimizes interclass variation and maximizes interclass separation for both majority and minority classes. We show that DDA loss can be optimized using the standard stochastic gradient descent algorithm. DDA loss can be promptly applied to any deep neural network architecture with minimal intervention. We conduct extensive experiments on a synthesized wild dataset and two popular larger scale wild fair datasets called AffectNet and RAFDB to demonstrate the improved recognition results with the proposed method. Before we dive in into the proposed method, Let's review some preliminary concepts that are related to our work. So in a CN-based recognition system, the input is a training batch of M samples containing the input image and its associated label. Then CNN extracts the special features and the D-dimensional deep features are pulled using a pooling layer. Then this D-dimensional deep feature is fed to the last fully connected layer to extract the raw scores for the, all the classes or logits. And then a softmax function will calculate normalized scores for that input image to yield the prediction. Finally, the cross entropy loss will, calcul will calculate the discrepancy between the prediction, prediction and the true label. Softmax loss is actu actually the combination of the last fully connected layer, the softmax function, and the cross entropy loss, and it's formulated as below. Let's see how center loss works. Center loss minimizes the intra-class variation by penalizing the dis distance between the deep feature and its corresponding class center in the embedding space. And it's jointly optimized with softmax loss, where the hyperparameter lambda is controlling the contribution of center loss to the total loss. On the left side, you see how data flows in a supervised learning algorithm jointly supervised by softmax loss center loss. In this slide, we see the effect of softmax loss and center loss on a normal actual data set called MNIST, which is very balanced. As you can see, we are not achieving a very good discrimination with softmax loss, but center loss on the other hand is creating compact clusters that are well separated from each other. But when things get a little bit messier and we are, we are dealing with a wide data set, you can see that even center loss is struggling and we have a minority classes overlapping in the embedding space. So our solution, discriminant distribution agnostic loss, properly separates cluster deep feature vectors for both minority and majority classes in the embedding space. And it's formulated as below. DDA loss estimates the probability of deep feature XI belonging to cluster K with center CK using a softmax function. Minimizing DDA loss is actually maximizing the log likelihood of this probability over a batch of M samples. It pushes the deep feature XI from the, class, from the classes that it doesn't belong to, and it pulls the deep feature toward its corresponding class center in the embedding space. This is how data flows in a learning algorithm that is su supervised jointly by softmax loss, center loss, and DDA loss. As you can see, for center loss, we are only inputting uh, the corresponding class center for the deep features, but in DDA loss, all class centers are employed. Intuitively, the contribution from both majority and minority classes are taken into account to create a distribution agnostic loss to mitigate the bias toward majority classes. The proposed DDA loss, as mentioned, is jointly optimized with softmax loss, center loss, uh, to create the total loss. And the contribution of uh, center loss is controlled by the hyperparameter lambda, and the contribution of DDA loss is controlled by, by the hyperparameter gamma. Let's dive in how to optimize the DDA loss. The proposed DDA loss is differentiable and can be optimized with the standard stochastic gradient descent algorithm. The joint optimization of DDA loss with softmax loss and center loss will contribute to their gradients with respect to the deep features and centers. This is how we calculate uh, the gradient of DDA loss with respect to the deep features. Intuitively, this optimization will distribute deep features in the embedded space so that it minimizes DDA loss and the total loss. And this is how we calculate the gradients of DDA loss with respect to the centers. Centers are randomly initialized according to the heat initialization method. And we use this 
update formula for updating the centers. We summarized the training of a supervised learning algorithm such as CNN VDDA loss. We initialize the network parameters and centers. We sample a mini batch of size M from the data set. We forward pass all samples in the mini batch and then calculate the loss function, which is the joint supervision of softmax loss, uh, center loss, and DDA loss. We calculate gradients with respect to the deep features and the centers, and we update the network parameters and centers. We repeat steps two, three, four, five, six until convergence. Experiments. To mimic the characteristic of a wide dataset and visually and intuitively uh, analyze our method, we create a wild MNIST or WMNIST by randomly sam sam sampling from the original MNIST dataset. Few classes in the WMNIST have drastically low number of data points, such as you know, class 4, class 5, and class 7. To visualize these 2D deep features, we use a, a deeper version of the Lenet network called Lenet Plus Plus, and we use a two neuron fully connected layer right before the 10 neuron fully connected layer in the end and probe it for visualization. Here, here's the result of our visual experiments on the WMS dataset. As we can see, center loss, as mentioned before, has overlapping regions for the minority classes, but on the case of DDA loss, as we are increasing the contribution of DDA loss by increasing the gamma parameter, we are seeing that both majority classes and minority classes are being um, separated in the embedding space. Quantitative analysis on WMNIST. We train Lenitz++ plus plus on WMNIST and report the classification accuracy on MNIST tested. As you can see, DDA loss with gamma parameter set as 7 is achieving a an accuracy of 97.34%. Uh, outperforming our baseline methods, which is softmax loss and center loss. For our wild experiment dataset, we first experiment with AffectNet, the largest wild fair dataset available with 280,000 training images and 3,500 testing images. The input size is 224 by 224. We do data augmentation on the fly, and we use the CNN architecture ResNet 18. We train ResNet 18 on AffectNet for 20 epochs with, with batch size 100, 128, and the initial rate uh, learning rate is 0 0.01, decayed by a factor of 10 every 5 epochs. This is the comparison of various methods on AffectNet. As you can see, DDA loss with gamma set as 4 is achieving an accuracy of 62.34%. Outperforming other state of the art methods and our baseline methods. This is the confusion matrices for AffectNet. As you can see, center loss is boosting the recognition accuracy for most of the majority classes, but is degrading the performance for minority classes. On the other hand, DD loss is boosting the uh, recognition rates for the minority classes and is keeping comparable result for majority classes. For RAFDB, we have 12,000 training images, and about 3,000 testing images. The input size is 90 by 90, and we do data augmentation on the fly. CNN architecture is ResNet 18, and we train it for 60 epochs with batch size of 64. Initial learning rate is 0 0.01, decayed by a factor of 10 every 20 epochs. Here's the comparison of various methods on RAFDB. As you can see, DDA loss, again, with Get gamma parameters set as 5 is achieving an accuracy of 86.90. Because the RAFDB's testing set is in balance, we also report the average accuracy, which is, the, which is actually the mean of diagonal values on the confusion matrices. DDA loss with gamma 5 is achieving an accurate, average accuracy of 79.71%, outperforming other state-of-the-art methods and our baseline methods. Here are the confusion matrices. Similar thing uh, happens on RAFDB compared to uh, AffectNet, boosting the minority recognition results and uh, keeping comparative results for majority classes. As you can see, as we are increasing the uh, contribution of DDA loss, we are achieving higher accu accuracy, but after a certain point, the accuracy is decreasing on both RAFDB and AffectNet, which means that uh, DDA loss has to be optimized 
in a sweet spot. Here are some example recognition results for both RAFDB and AFFICnet. On top row of each data set, we have correctly classified images, and on the bottom row, we have uh, misclassified, misclassified images. So to conclude, we propose discriminant distribution agnostic law for facial expression recognition in the wild. DDA loss implicitly pushes deep, feature of, deep features of a class away from other classes and pulls them toward their corresponding class centers in the embedding space. Supervised jointly by softmax loss and center loss, differentiable and can be trained using SGD. Any state of the art seen in architecture can promptly employ DDA loss and our experiments uh, with a toy data set and two wild fair data set master the superior performance of DDA loss under wild scenario. Thank you for listening and here are the